Right, okay, here we are at Meriden Church. Going to do a little bit of sketching, um, painting. We've had a little wander around and I've decided I'm going to do this awkward view here just to show you how to start. Okay, Maybe let's get a little, little view there. Sorry, Hannah, so you can start to see what you want to and how much you want to put in your picture. Um, and you might try it the other way around, you might have it so it's upright and think, okay, I'll have a, a portrait style one rather than the landscape. How much can I get in? What's the dominant things in there? We'll try and do that. That wall's going to come halfway up here. That might be a bit big for all that. You might end up having a lot of wall in there and no church. And then that bit of background. And you just start to get yourself orientated for how much you want to do. So I think that look view looks better than that one but it's just a little feel for it first without and it's getting it's all getting your eye in as well it's all getting to grips with looking at the view and that's anyway that's you start to do. So one or two people were asking yesterday about how do you start if you've got a big piece of paper when you're outdoor sketching and drawing I wouldn't normally work that big I think I showed you the other day about my little sketchbooks I tend to work this size to fit them all into that sort of size sketchbooks um, and I tend to do watercolours although you don't have to but that's the size I work it's, so it's a lot smaller than that and I also have one leg yeah balance and, and whistle at the same time to give you because that's going to be a nice decent chunky thing to measure in there um, and then move that measure around the picture so if I start with that window bring it down that comes to roughly the bottom of that wall if I take it up move it all the way up that's roughly the church spire the um, the cockerel is above it and the, the roof is just below it so I can sort of get an idea of how how tall that is so that's three so there's one two three of the window measures in that thing if I turn it round sideways one two is about the gap of the wall there so if I look at my little drawing here so if I guess it's offset it's off to one side if I guess my measure to be something like that that means I can get very quickly I can realign my thing one will take it up there one will bring it down here recheck it yeah slightly out it needs to be just a little bit wider on that um, you can do a different thing with getting your angles you can line it up like that bring your paper up behind it to check it so you're locking your arm and you're not moving your arm because a lot of people as soon as they do that they go ooh, ooh, they move it to suit what's what they've drawn on here so the angle bits is probably quite an important one to get right so look to see where it comes in relation to your window it comes right down to about here somewhere um, about halfway up that is the other little roof coming across which again is another funny little angle going across there um, we've got to get the church tower in there's not much gap for me here so that's where my church tower starts it goes up to that line that I've already got there um, that is horizontal there then you've got a very steep angle going away from it oh let's just get the width of the church tower back to my measure width of the church tower is about three quarters of that whatever may have made that width of the church tower is about three quarters the side of it is just a little bit of a side there very steep angle on the and on the bit coming down the side here lining up the angle on the side of the church space on there because it's you want the bank to come in and up there there's my wall coming up and we start to do the fiddly bits of the edging on there should really check those but we're not going to for a bit of speed um, little gateway we'll have to check that angle of the gate it semi closed Julie would it look better it doesn't matter it won't close into that gap so there's, there's yeah. half a gate missing That's over there <laughs> so um, I, can, I can invent that anyway and yeah. make sure it goes in something like that if I wanted to and I don't mm. think <laughs> I don't think we dare move that stick that's propping it open. Probably get out sketching. See, already with that, I've expanded. You know that little line that I put in here? It's starting to expand from that edge because my cockerel will go above that line, which would have been very inconvenient if I'd done it right to the edge of the paper. You couldn't get that last little bit in. So if you just give yourself that little border to go round if you start to sketch, it just helps with that one. Right, a quickish watercolour then, because yeah. <laughs> popular, popular demands. So yeah. if you've now got bored and want to go off and do your own, I shall um, just carry on and do a bit here for people. Um, but otherwise I shall do a bit of a, a watercolour -y thing, because I, I know some people want to have a look at that. I'll just put in a few little bit more detail in so I know where to stop and start my colours. 
altar. There's a crenellations at the top of the church there. There's a little bit of a marking in there. Right, so I'm just going to duck down and get my watercolours on the go here. Let's just test my colour on that. It's a bit strong. Oh, put a bit of red into that as well. I'm just mixing up a bit of colour for a shadowy colour. And it's quite handy to put some of your shadows and tones in. Something like that, that'll do. And because the sun was in, now it's just starting to come out. I can start to flick in all these little bits which are quite dark, like the edges of the um, crenellations, the little bits of shaping here, just to give me my shapes first. So hopefully that's already starting to look a bit three-dimensional with just those in there. And it'll just help to give the... So it doesn't have to be too accurate. Give me a nice big dark one underneath there. But it just helps to give the shape of it and the little cross thing at the top there as well, which is quite nice. Okay, so I can relax a bit now. That little panic was over. Now the sun's gone <laughs> in again. I can, I can just enjoy getting the background and everything else started. But you can start to see that's all. I'm just going to bring that water pot up. Excuse me a second. Just because it's a bit of a long way. On. I think I might fall off my chair in a minute. Oh, that's good. Spill, spill onto my trousers. <laughs> my able assistant here <laughs> is holding my water pot for me. So, yeah. Bit of that, this bodges into the bottom there. Um, bit of that, there's a bit of bluey grey into it. So we'll have a little bit of another puddle with a bit of blue up there. Just looking at all those fantastic colours in there. It's a bit strong, a bit of yellow ochre, perhaps on its own there. That's gone a bit greeny. I'll have to put that in first so it doesn't go green. So I'm just testing a few of these colours out to see what I've got. A bit of that colour. In a reddish colour. So I think that's going to be enough for those. A bit more pinky at the top there. So with these bits now I can just wet these bits on. I think it's probably going to be safer to start off with just wetting these bits over the shadows and you're just going to splodge in some of those different colours. It's a bit more pinky at that part so I'll go over those, over the bit on there, a bit of the yellow ochre. I mean, you can take a lot longer to do this if you want to, but it's just fun doing it nice and quickly. Then it changes to a bit more burnt umber into it. Burnt umber and ultramarine blue. Oops, I didn't wet it first, did I? Thank you, assistant. I don't really care if I wobble over the lines, which is lucky because I've just wobbled over the lines. <laughs> and it's just giving me that effect of the building there. Just wet that one. I'm wetting them because it makes it blurry and it goes a bit, you'll see every brush mark if I don't wet it so just by wetting it it'll just give you the effects making it quite blurry and that's a bit more grey. A hint of brickwork onto it, a bit of bluey greys in there, a bit more of that orangey red because it's a completely different colour. Go over the shadows again. And in between some of the bits down the bottom here. Again, the same on this side. that lovely bright orangey colour that really brings this forward. The colours are stronger and brighter as you come forward. Then it's a blurry in the background which is works, the principles work. A bit of greys and things like that. Oh not not being exactly the right place but never mind we'll put something like that on there. Right so I'll leave that to dry. Um, right now I just need to get some super darks in there. Don't look at this colour I'm using here because this is Payne's Grey, which I normally ban you from using because I make you <laughs> make you mix it. But I will get some other colours mixing into it so it's not just a plain 
very dark and this is where you can really start to flick out now these are dry you can go back in and start to flick out some of these extra dark bits into those and just go back into some of these shadowy bits um, some of these dark corners into those some of this window Nice little thing that's coming through there now then for a Yeah. Put more darks into this. We're nearly done folks, so you can I'll let you wander off in a moment. Boxing all your tones into it with your pen. So you can you sharpen it all up. Yeah. yeah, that's right. You can do that first if you want to. Do it in a lot more detailed than that if you want to do it that way around and get into all the different bits with it and again that just it gives it crisps it up somehow yeah. or if you're doing a, a, a quickish sketch um, to, but you do a lot more with it with your pen and you can get you can spend all day just doing your pen work if you want to don't, don't put me copper on top there but that just gives you a bit of a more detail it's, if you're doing pen work from your foreground to your background so you put all your pen work in your foreground and then just put less and less as you get towards the background Right, if you want to have a go for it then, I'll come round and see what you're up to. Thank you, Mum. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have to do that one, that is complicated with all the animals. I so just, just love that, but I think after yesterday, that is... Over there, Lauren the Barbie. Um, mm. But I think we can all see how, how really nice they are. Um, especially if you look, if we go around the other side of them. So. <laughs> Sheila, <laughs> upside down. <laughs> Sheila, that, is it yours? Uh, that's mine. Yeah, that's yours. This is um, this is really nice. Thank you. Are you going to paint it? Yeah, yeah I need to put shadows in and so forth. Yes, yeah. you can and do some more shadows with the, the with, with the on the gate with your pen. Yeah. So you can do that with your pen, and I'd put a hint of background into that as well. Yeah, that's um, uh, just a little hint with your pen, not too much with your pen, but you do that with your, your paints as much as anything. Yeah. Um, but that's really nice. Now you've got everything in proportion. You've got a nice way of um, drawing with your pen as well. You've got all the texture into it, which would be which would nice. So I'd just pick a little paint onto it. Don't worry about it if it doesn't reach the edges and things like that. Don't be too precise with it when you do.